very happy to be here. Glad to be able to help and teach on this class this morning. And what I want to say before I even get started is this is one of the most important steps in my econ. This is not the total income shifting. Sometimes people get it mixed up. They get it confused. They think, well, you know, I changed my W-4, now I've income shifted. No, that's the first step. You have to do something after that first step. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Ivy has already uh, alluded to that. And what, you, what are you going to do with that money? So the first thing I want to say, let's, let's really deal with the elephant in the room. That is the new W-4, okay? So if you've not gone out to the IRS website, okay, you can find it here. You go right here to the IRS website and you click right here on Form W-4. Now, last year it looked one way. This year it looks totally different, totally different, totally different. So if we get here and we pull it up, this is what it looks like. But what I want to say here is this looks very, very confusing, right? It's got a whole bunch of lines. It's a whole bunch of words. Then you get to the back here. It's a whole bunch of tables and numbers. And think about it. The last one didn't look like this, and people were confused on that one. Now, I guarantee you they're going to be confused on this one. But the great thing about it is you have my econ to help you through this whole process. The great thing about it is also the IRS has put some tools together to make this whole process very easy. But what I want to say is there's some very key things that you want to understand, okay? If you've been around in MyEcom for a little while and you've always used the form, let's move away from that. Let's migrate to the technology status. Hey, let's migrate to how do we do this with ease? Because you want your new people, you want everybody to be able to go through this, this whole system and this process with ease because when we have a simple system, more people can do it, we get more duplication. And what's most important is now you start to get success in your cash flow. Because when your new people come in, if they don't get this done, and you want to kind of walk them through this, kind of help them through it, answer questions. But if they don't get this done, you'll be, they'll be coming back to you 25 days, 30 days from now, 45 days. And they'll be saying, well, I didn't get much value. It, it didn't really help me very much. And if we get them locked in, we get them 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars back into their paycheck. Well, hey, guess what we got? We got some cash. We got something that we can work with. We can say, okay, they, they're, they're having success because it's all about cash flow, not just commissions, okay? So now what you want to do is you want to navigate to the IRS website here, okay? So now we're on the IRS website. We're going to go all the way down here to where it says do a paycheck checkup. Now, remember, a new W-4 form should be done every year or when your financial situation changes. Okay, guess what? It is now a new year. So everybody that did one six months ago, guess what? It's time to do one again. If you did one two months ago, nine months ago, it's time to do one again, okay? And when you get in here, it starts to talk about some tax law changes and stuff. You can read through this, okay? But before you begin, now I take a lot of people through the quick start and I take them through this W-4 process inside the quick start. I think that's a real easy way to do it. Let's get it done. Let's get it done in 24 to 48 hours because we want them to start getting some cash flow within 10 to 14 days so they can say, hey, I joined that My Econ thing. It's giving me great success. I'm having fun. Things are happening, right? But before we even get into it, look, it says why use the estimator, okay? So let's talk about it, okay? It says why. So let me move this little thing out of the way here, all right? It says the IRS encourages everyone to use the, the tax withholding estimator to perform a paycheck checkup. This will help you make sure that you have the right amount of tax withheld from your paycheck. Some people say, well, they taking too many taxes. Well, guess what? You tell them how much to pay by how you fill out the form, okay? okay. All right, hold on, guys. I was supposed to be off there. Sorry. I don't know. It, my, my computer's linked up to my, uh, my phone, okay? So it says there are several reasons you're, you're to check your withholding. Checking your withholding can help you protect against having too little tax withheld or facing an unexpected tax bill or penalty at tax time. At the same time, you may prefer to have less tax withheld up front so you receive more in your paycheck, okay? So you want your, your money up front. You don't want to have them holding on to your money all year long. And it says, when should you use the estimator, okay? Now we're going to get into the estimator, but I think I got to lay some ground rules first. If you change your W-4 withholding for 2019, the IRS reminds you to be sure to recheck your withholding at the start of 2020. 
We're at the start of 2020. A mid-year withholding change in 2019 will have a different full year impact in 2020. So if you do file a new form W-4 for 2020, your withholding might be higher. I mean, if you don't, it says your withholding might be higher or lower than you intend. So this is why we're going to do this. So everybody in my econ that has a W-4, okay? Everybody in my econ that has a W-4, you want to go out and fill out a new one, okay? And I would do it probably in the next few days here. Wait till you get your first paycheck. Now, here's what you need. You're going to need your, your most recent pay stub. I will wait until you get the first one inside this year, 2020, okay? So when everything starts over, because what this calculator is doing or the estimator is doing is taking a real-time snapshot, okay, of where you are. How much have you paid in? What's coming out of the check? If you do it on last year's uh, check, for example, that's like right before the year change, well, that's taking all the stuff into account last year. It's not talking about right now. So you want to wait to your first check that you got in this year, and you want to have that paycheck, and let's go ahead and go through the estimator, okay? So we're going to go through the estimator and do a quick example right here, okay? My time is moving real fast, so I'm going to have to go through this, but we're going to have this recorded so you'll be able to look at it. Now, it says about your filing status. So in this example, we're doing a married filing jointly, okay? So based on whatever your situation is, you put yours in there, okay? So married filing jointly, boom. Can someone else claim you as a, a dependent on their tax return? My answer is going to be no. Now, if you have questions about any of these questions, there's a little question mark here, okay? You click it, it gives you more information, okay? Now, dependents, do, do you have any dependents that you're going to claim on your tax return? In this example, my answer is going to be yes, okay? Because I'm going to have two children. So now, how many dependents do you anticipate claiming on your tax return this year? So this year, I want to claim both of them. Now, your situation may be different. You're not going to put exactly the same things that I'm doing here. You're going to answer based on your scenario, okay? Income. Do you or will you or your spouse hold a job this year with paychecks with uh, federal income tax that will be regularly withheld? The answer is going to be yes. So do we have taxes coming out that check? Yes. How many jobs do you expect to hold this year? I only have one job, okay? How many jobs does your spouse expect to hold this year? Well, she's gonna have one job, okay? So we're just kind of going through here. See, this is much easier than just looking at that form. That form is not as accurate, even if you were looking at the new form this year or even last year, this is the most accurate way to do that. And I'm telling you, everybody, Mike, somebody called me yesterday. They said, man, have you seen the new W-4? How, have you taken anybody through it yet? What you need to do is get away from the form because this thing is going to fill the form out for you by just answering questions. It's doing a lot of things in the background, okay? And even as a new person, you want to go through this and understand how this works. Will I get a pension? No, I'm not old enough to get a pension, so I'm going to say no, okay? Check all that apply to you and your spouse, okay? So these are other sources of income. Now, this is very important. It says right here, net self-employment income. Well, a new person in my econ, they're not really going to know how much income they're going to make from my econ, so they shouldn't do anything there. Now, let's say you drive Uber or something, though, and you're making $2,000 a month part-time while you're working your job. Well, you might want to put that in here, okay? But most times, people don't have all this other stuff, okay? Scholarships, Social Security benefits. So we just kind of go down through here. In my example, I don't have any of this, so I'm not checking any of these boxes. My demographics. I will be 65. The answer is going to be no. I hope I don't look 65. Okay, my spouse. She's not 65. I'm, I'm much younger than 65. She's much younger. So I'm hoping that that's good. Blind. I can see what I'm doing right here, so I'm not checking that. So we'll go right down here to next. Okay, now. Now it's going to ask me some questions about my job, okay? About my job. Man, time does fly. So let's look at this. Do you expect to hold this job for the entire year? Yes, I don't plan on getting fired or quitting, okay? How frequently are you paid? I'm paid every two weeks. Now, to every two weeks and twice monthly are not the same thing. So you see there's, there's, a, there's a difference here. You check which one that applies to you, okay? So I got every two weeks. On what date did your most recent pay period end? So now this is where your pay stub comes into play. So when you're doing a quick start orientation with somebody, maybe you're doing it over the web, you're doing a webinar like this and you're helping them get quick started, right? You wanna prep them, say, hey, 
get your most recent paycheck paycheck stuff. So we'll do, we'll go through that W four. We'll get it all squared away while we're doing the quick start. You don't want them to be unprepared and say, well, I don't have my pay stub. I don't know where to get one. So maybe two or three days prior to, you know, doing the quick start or whatever, or the day before, let them know. Go online, get your pay stub, do what you got to do. So let's go ahead and put a date in here. All right. We'll say it's the third. Okay. So we got paid yesterday in this example. All right. It says enter the total number of wages you expect this year. Okay, so we got to know how much are we planning to get paid for the year. In this example, the first spouse is $40,000. Okay, we expect to get $40,000 for the year. Now, how many bonuses? Well, I got one of those jobs, they don't offer bonuses, right? So we're not putting anything there. But if you do have something, you may have something here. Okay, now using your last pay statement, enter the total federal income taxes withheld. So here's my total. All right, my total, since this is the beginning of the year, so I'm going to say $250 was taken out of this check for federal taxes, okay? Now, from the last check, all right, yeah, that's year to date, and then it says from last check. So what was it in the period? So the total cumulatively, cumulatively would be year to date, and then the last check would be this pay period. Since it's all the same thing, okay, I got the same number here because we're getting started right now. This is the beginning of the year. This will be my first paycheck, but your number might not have this, the, the same two of when we're dealing with somebody in February or March or something like that, right? So that's why these numbers are looking the same. Yours may not look like this or the person you're working with, okay? Do you or will you contribute to a deferred retirement plan, okay? Tax deferred retirement plan. I'm going to just say no here, okay? Now, they may have something. Do you contribute to an HSA? Sometimes people say, well, what is an HSA? Well, if you got to ask, you probably don't have one, okay? But that's a health savings account. But in this example, I'm saying no, all right? So that deals with me. But now we got to deal with the spouse, so we click on this. See, when all, all those tables on that back side of the form that, we, that I just showed you, that's what all this stuff deals with. But here, you're just answering questions. If you're going down through tables and all that, see, that makes our business look way more complicated than it needs to be and our business is not complicated. It is a very simple business. So now we still just do it right from here, and I'm gonna show you how easy at the end of this process that is gonna make for the W-4 uh, correction. Now, does your spouse hold a job for the whole year? Yes, okay. How frequently is your spouse paid? My spouse is paid every two weeks, all right? On what date did your spouse most recent pay paycheck end? So we're gonna go right here, same thing, on that Friday, the third, okay? What's the total wages? 60,000. So the wife makes a little more in this example. Now, enter any bonuses? I have none, okay? You may have some, but I have none. Using your last pay statement, enter the total federal income tax withheld, all right? So now, let's go here and put the total here. So this will be a little more because this is a higher income, right? So I got 375 year to date because this is the beginning of the year. And then the last check is going to be the same, 375. But remember, again, those numbers are not always going to be the same. I'm just doing it in this example based on the time frame, what we're doing now. Now, she didn't do any tax deferred retirement plan. She didn't do anything here with the HSA. The answer is no. So now we go to next. Now, here's what you want to do. You want to see the adjustments. These are adjustments to income, okay? So we look at these adjustments because you want to know what's down in here. Now, Let's say that person has some student loan interest that they're paying, okay, that they plan on paying for the year. Well, that's going to go here, okay? If they got educator expenses, that's going to go here. See, these things will adjust the, the withholding down, okay? Okay, so, so it's not, it's, it's like a, it's, a, it's an adjustment. But now, the health savings deduction outside of what you already put in there, all right? That's nothing. But now, right here, alimony. Somebody may have some alimony, Okay. So they got, they got to look at these things. But now, right here, we are going, I want you to make a note of this right here. It says certain business credits for reservists, performing artists, okay, and fee-based government officials. Now, they used to have one that was worded a little differently, but on this new one, they don't have it here. So we have to kind of do an improv improvisation, okay? But here's what we're going to do here. I want you to just make a note of this. This is where you would use an area that you can put a projection of your tax deductions for your business in my econ. 
And this is one of the X factors and beauties of what we do here at this company, because now you can start estimating what you think you might have in deductions. All right, and we'll put it here and it'll adjust that thing again. And now you get more money back into your paycheck. But right now for the first part of this example, we're leaving it blank, okay? So let's keep moving. All right, deductions from income, standard deduction, right? Now, they may take the itemized deduction, but most people are probably gonna take the standard deduction, folks, because remember, they doubled the standard deduction in the previous year, and they capped a lot of stuff at 10,000. So most people, the standard deduction is gonna be higher, it's gonna give them a better advantage, so most people are probably taking the standard. But somebody may be trying to take itemized, and they can do either or. So we're gonna take the standard deduction in this scenario. So that's gonna give us a $24,800 deduction, okay? Now let's move on to the next, credits. We do wanna see the credits, all right? So we wanna click this button, okay, to see credits. All right, child and dependent related. Now, you stated that you have two dependents. So see, it's telling me, hey, you said you had two dependents, so you, you need to probably need to have two of them on here or something's going on. So that's why it's already open for me. See, this is much more simpler, easier to use, and easier to understand than the form. So now, the child tax credit, okay? So I got two children under 17 in this example. So I'm gonna click this drop down button, boom, and put two, very simple. All this stuff about maybe, maybe I got some uh, daycare and stuff like that. I'm not putting anything in here right now, but your situation or the person you're sitting there talking to may be different, but for this example, I'm not putting anything in there, okay? Earned income credit. This income is, is a fairly decent high income, okay? Because, you know, you put those two together, it's 100,000. So, you know, they might not have much going on with this earned income credit. I'm going to leave that blank. But if it was somebody with a lower income or something like that, or they think they're going to be qualified, but here's what they can do. They can click on the little question button and they can click it. And it's going to tell them more information about that. In this example, we're leaving that one alone and we're going down here to these other ones, right? So you see foreign tax credit. You know, most people might not have stuff going on on all these, but you can look at them. But in this example, we're not doing anything with them, okay? Alternative minimum tax, energy efficient vehicles, nothing with that. We're going forward, boom. Now, look at what happened. It gave me a clear understanding of something. Now here's what's great, okay? Here's what's great. Now, I only got, they say I got five minutes here, so I got to really do some good deal going on here, right? All right. Now, it says the expected tax withholding. So I'm expected, based on what I put in here, I'm going to pay the IRS $16,000 plus, okay? My anticipated tax obligation, this is what I'm supposed to pay them, $4,632, based on what I put in here. So I'm going to overpay by 11,000 plus dollars, okay? And it says I'm gonna get a refund. So what this does for the new person, it gives them, see, when we start explaining stuff to people, they may or may not take it for face value. But when we do it on this website, guess what? All this comes from the IRS. So they have more, this has more credibility because it's third party. So they won't be saying, well, my econ said, John said, Angela said, right? They're gonna say, well, the IRS said. So the IRS just told me that I'm going to get a refund. And when I get this refund, it means I overpaid. So now they clearly understand the refund means I overpaid taxes. See, we're in a scenario in America where most people are conditioned to think that a refund is good. And the bigger the refund they think is the better. Well, really, it's just the opposite. Okay. So now we go down here. It says, are you happy with these results? Well, I'm not happy with this. I don't want the IRS to hold $11,000 of my money, okay? So what we do is we take this and we slide this all the way down. See, we want to adjust our results. So we want to get close to zero, right? So now what we're doing here, it says, okay, I don't want no big refund. I don't want that. I want to get my cash now. $11,000 is a lot of money on a monthly basis. It's a lot of money on a monthly basis. All right, now it says how to adjust your withholding. Look at this, boom, how to adjust. So it tells you exactly how to fill out the W-4 form. It says, put this on this number, put this on this line. On line three, put 479. 
And if that's not easy enough, if that's not easy enough, just guess what? Look at this. Boom. It says download a pre-filled W4 form. So you don't have to be trying to go through all those tables. If you just click the button, bam, look at this. We open this baby up. You should be able to see it. Okay. And there's the W4. And on line three, it has the number that we should put in here. It has the number right there. Boom. That's all you need to do. Now, what they need to do is fill out that top, bam, side at the bottom, turn in. You're done. You're done, right? Okay. But now, here's the thing. Here's something else you want to see. Look at this. It says, I'm going to get $274 less taken out of my check for taxes on the first job here, on this job. And then this, the other one here, okay, 210 less. So we get paid twice a week, right? I mean, twice a month. So that's 274 times two. This is 210 times two. You add all that together, that's the cash flow. See, we increase the cash flow by just doing this correction. But real quick, I got to go back here. I only got a couple of minutes. Now, let me go back. Let me show you something. Let's go back here in this example to the adjustment. Let's put our home-based business on here. Boom. Now, you remember what that total was, okay? I think it was 11000 overpayment. So now let's put $5,000 here. $5,000 is a great, easy number to put in here that's very conservative for getting started. See, on just mileage, most people will do six or $7,000 in deductions on just mileage. Pretty easy, okay? So for example, you drove your car 15,000, 16,000 miles, right? 15,000. Let's write off 80% of those miles for business. That's not hard to do. Well, let's say that's about 12, 13,000. This is 12,000 miles, okay? You get at least 50 cents a mile, but this year is 57 and a half, but at least 50 cents to make the math real easy, all right? So that'll be $6,000 in tax deductions for just driving the car. That don't even include the uh, cell phone bill, the internet bill, okay, D uh, business meals. It don't include paying your child. So putting $5,000 here is relatively low. But what this does, it takes into account that you're going to have some adjustments here because you got a Schedule C coming up. So we put that on here, and let's go back here to the, to the uh, end. Boom. Look at this. Now my overpayment jumped to 12000 See? Putting a home-based business on here saved me money. See, the tax, the tax obligation is lower. Now we go here. Let's, let's scroll this back again. Boom. Take it all the way down. Look, 217 less and 292 less. All right? Every paycheck. Two, twice a uh, month. Add that all together. Let's say we got another eight, nine hundred bucks, right? Let's go here. Boom. You can take that and go to your payment calculator in here, okay? Debt payment. So go right here. Go to the income shifting membership. And let's see how this works. Let's go to the debt elimination calculator. Boom. You're going to put your stuff in here, all your debts. Okay? This is an example here. We got all kinds of stuff. We got furniture, cars, student loans, everything, right? Let's go in here. Boom. Let's take the, let's say it's $800 and calculate. Boom. Now look at this. It did a debt elimination plan for you. Take the $800, slap it on this. Boom. In four months, this one's done. In 11 months, this one's done. 17 months, this one's done. Took us 97 months to get this thing done here, right? $255,000 in debt. Okay, we adjusted. See, this is the second part of income shifting. The first part was filling out the W-4. Now we took the money and did something with it. You could take some of that money and do a debt elimination plan. Now, Ivy showed you this. I got to show this other example here that we got to move. We got to move. We got to move. Okay, let's go down here to tools. Let's go here to calculators. Okay, all this stuff is in your back office, folks. Periodic monthly investment. Let's take that $800. Let's get 9% return in the market because we got investment training. We're not doing that today, but we got that, right? Let's do that for the next 20 years of our life. That's income shifting. This has nothing to do with a downline. Look what happened. My econ was a $534,000 decision. It's not a $13.95 decision. It's not a $34.95 a month decision. It's not a $49 decision. My econ is a several hundred thousand dollar decision based on a process based on strategy. You see, you made the best decision in your life to join this company. 
and you're just getting started. Now, see, on this process, you're going to get better with your finance. You're going to walk a little different. You're going to feel a little different. Guess what? You're going to be able to talk to people, and they're going to be recruited because of your testimony. You see? That's my econ. See, this is the beauty. This is the core of my econ. You can change your life. Even if you can't build a big old down line. Yeah, I build down lines and stuff for a living. But everybody's not like me. Everybody's not like Ivy. But guess what? You can run a strategy. Everybody that joined this company can fill out a W-4 if they got one. Everybody can take the savings and put it on debt if they got some. Everybody can take the savings and put in their investment if they got one, if they want to. See, we got 100% opportunity for those that want it. All right. I think I'm three minutes over. I got to turn the thing back over. I got to stop sharing.